Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. If you want to know what 1933 Germany looked like or 1917 Russia, just look out your window. Businesses wrecked, censorship, the seizure of power, armed thugs patrolling the streets, injuring and murdering people, weak politicians immobilized by the mob. Nancy and Chuck have unleashed forces they themselves are now powerless to stop. The mob will not stop until the country is dissolved. Make no mistake, what we are witnessing now is a Marxist revolution throughout the West to wipe away everything that went before. The Marxists in America, including inside the church, have seized control and are now ramping up their assault against what may prove to be a minority of individuals who still believe in what America is, or at least was. And they have reached their heights of success because they have lied, and lied about everything. They wrapped their lies in lofty platitudes with talk of equality and justice being their key mantras, and they have duped not all of America, but what is increasingly looking like a sufficient number of Americans to achieve success. And once they have achieved that final level of success, it will be game over for any who opposed them along the way. Since the evil has, as always, been propagated by a lie, the only weapon, indeed the only weapon necessary to repel them, is the truth. But there is one gigantic hurdle which must be cleared. People will have to be convinced and they must accept that they have been lied to. Because no one likes to face the music about being taken for a fool, there is a double duty that the right must engage in immediately not only telling people the truth of the matter, but also convincing them that they argue and believe like they do because they have been fooled. That's a tall order. A quote, incorrectly but commonly attributed to Mark Twain, sums it up succinctly. Quote, it's easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. So the task at hand before November 3rd is to convince a sufficient number of people not only that their position is wrong, but they have arrived at that position because they've been played. Hitler and his Nazi propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, understood how all this plays out. Quote, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it, closed quote. That has certainly been the case with not just Marxists who invaded cultural institutions decades ago, but also their allies in the media, especially the electronic media, who keep not just repeating the lie, but depicting it in emotional imagery, devoid of intellectual critique. But a system, any system, built on lies does eventually begin to crack, and the lie becomes visible, if ever so slightly. Hitler and the Nazis continued, quote, The lie can be maintained only for such time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic, and or military consequences of the lie, closed quote. The liars must not just maintain the lie, but they must tell bigger lies to cover the original lie. And when the truth tellers become louder, which they always do, a final phase is entered into. Returning to the Nazis, quote, it thus becomes vitally important for the state to use all of its powers to repress dissent, for the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie, and thus, by extension, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state, closed quote. You see, liars know the truth. They couldn't lie so effectively and completely without a total apprehension of the truth. So, lies have to become bigger and louder and more outrageous. We see all this playing out right now before our eyes. Police are not just horrible people, but they must be defunded. Racism not only exists, but it is systemic. And what's more, the entire country is racist. It's even founded on racism. And what's more, trillions must be paid in reparation. America is in fact so racist, the entire nation as we know it must be completely overthrown and redrawn from scratch. And if you think that last point is a stretch, Consider that right now, this very minute, seven square blocks of downtown Seattle, again, right now, right now, have been seized by Black Lives Matter activists who have declared a brand new country. 
Oddly enough, the first thing they did was put up a border. Imagine that, an actual border from the no borders crowd, and they are refusing to abandon their newfound tiny nation. And yes, police will not go in by order of their superiors. The BLM have named their fledgling country the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. The little city-state is demanding the abolition of the police as well as all the courts, the entire judicial system be jettisoned, as well as all non-white prisoners be released immediately and retried. Although they haven't quite explained how to retry someone if there's no court system. How did we get here? To this point that a person must ask, you have to say, how did we get here? Because little by little, more people came to believe the lie. That's how. And they believed the lie because they were willing to believe the lie. The lie made them comfortable. It gave them the permission to be immoral themselves. It relieved their guilt. It was a good psychological fit. Living with truth can be uncomfortable, even a burden. So if the lie could be crafted in such a way so as to unburden people of the chains of morality, especially sexual morality, then every other evil could be smuggled into the culture. No tyrant ascends to power preaching death camps, genocide, and the gulag. Those simply come along as the logical extension of the lie while it's presented in its infancy. The leaders always intend that, they just keep that concealed until there's no longer a reason to do so. But however concealed they keep the plan, it must be moved forward, which means it becomes more and more revealed, even if subtly and covered over by even bigger lies. This is where we are now in America, and a parallel case can be made for affairs in the church. The masks are now almost completely coming off, and much of the Marxist master plan is now clearly visible for those willing to face the horrible reality. The question is, therefore, not are they unveiling themselves, that much is evident. Rather, how many will embrace the lie even more tightly, because as they look around at the culture dissolving, they cannot bear to hear that them being fooled was part of all this. In fact, them being fooled was critical to it. What began as a theological battle in the church has now turned into a physical battle in the streets. If this is not repelled in short order by those who love truth, it will go from blood in the streets to blood in the sanctuaries. If that happens, history will record that it would have been richly deserved. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.